mirror, mirror in the stall. Who's the campiest of them all? Why, you are, of course. Mirror, mirror in my hand. Who's the funniest in the land? Why, you are, of course. Mirror, mirror, answering truthfully you have done. Tell me, does Betty know that I'm the pretty one? Pinch it off, bitch. We got a daily challenge to get to. Does this mean I'm not the pretty one? with the gallery by my house is Taco Night. So, well, you're here today and you're going to earn your Mirror Mirror Badge. Oh. What does that mean? It means that each of you is going to take one of these styrofoam wig heads, because who doesn't love a little head? <laughs> and you are going to use the materials on your tables to craft your wig head into an exact replica of yourself. <laughs> I don't think there's the right shade. Who's ever winning that? What's that? I don't think they have the right shade. <laughs> you may need a little more time. Well, you have 30 minutes to use the materials in front of you and create a wig head that looks just like you. Now, whosoever wig head ends up looking the most like what they see in the mirror is going to be our winner. Okay. All right, cameras, are you ready? Yes. 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 On your mark, get set, craft! <laughs> That's my wig head! <laughs> Thank you. Like a whole bottle. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is empty. Oh, sorry, there we go. Let's put that I'm a little nervous about this because I'm colorblind. <gasps> what? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't know that. What? Yeah. I didn't know it. So, like, my, yeah, my normal makeup isn't this glamour. Are you want me to scissor you? What colors can't you see? Red and green. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Christmas was suck for you. That, I, that actually, explains yeah. this mismatch. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is one of the biggest parts of your hometown that has influenced your drag? Becoming a drag queen in Grand Junction really just taught me that no matter how good you think you are, there's always someone better, so keep trying to push yourself mm -hmm. to like reach that stage. The one thing that drag gave me too is the ability, because I live in such a small town, a very conservative town, it also helped fuel my activism and like let me try to start changing the world, like person by person, show by show, microphone by microphone. So Disney. Boris, I'm curious, uh -huh. what is it like being a camp king in Kansas City? I mean, I would say just being a king in Kansas City is is interesting and unique in general. Um, I mean, we don't really have that many kings. I wouldn't say it's like a king heavy. I mean, I'm heavy, but I wouldn't say that it's <laughs> a king heavy kind of city. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I definitely hang out more with queens and I do a lot of shows with queens. I, I dealt with a lot starting out, you know, the, you know, when you get serious about drag, you'll shave uh, off the beard or, you know, lot. or your eyebrows or you, you know, I never <laughs> liked bearded drag until I saw you. So like I deal with a lot of that weirdness. Yeah, I get that That's a lot. So I, you know, I don't really like drag kings, but I like you. Oh yeah. No. What? Oh, wonderful. It's like, where like, that's compliment. not a compliment. Yeah, exactly. No. Well, community for me means two things when it comes to drag. First of all, was the old community, I guess, when I got started. Um, and the reason why we were doing drag at that time is because our friends were dying and we needed to raise money to, you know, help them live and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, because government wasn't providing support. And then later, Austin is just such a diverse community and they have all types of drag and there's a little something for everyone. It wasn't always like that, but now they're really appreciating the camp aesthetic. When I decided to be a drag queen, I was literally lying in my hotel bed, recovering from the last surgery I had to complete my transition. Oh, wow. And I just had my sketch pad in front of me and I drew this outfit that I wanted to do and these crafts I wanted to make for it. And I went home and I, I told my friend who produced the show, I'm like, I'm gonna do your next show and I'm gonna debut my drag character. And it has been so healing. Look at this hat. I need Zana to look at it. Does this look like my hat? Yes, I do yes. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Can somebody okay. pass me a hot glue gun? Or do we need it's to It's probably for better to come over on the Yes! Yes! <laughs> What about you, Barb? Yeah. Because you're in LA, which is so competitive. Yeah, like that bar oh, yeah. is high, isn't it? It's very intimidating, especially with me. I'm relatively new to drive. I've been performing seriously for 10 months. Wow. So wow, what? <laughs> it is very competitive because mm -hmm. the LA scene is, there's a new drag Ooh. queen every second just popping out of some drag mom's yeah. vagina, you know? <laughs> and everybody wants their shot on stage and you have to fight for it, but it's easy to get your shot. You just be nice, yeah. be supportive, go to shows, enjoy and drag. drag. Same rules apply everywhere, what you do. Yeah. Yes. And you'll be fine. One of the reasons why I um, loved Camp One and Kiki the first season and why I wanted to come here is because when I was growing up, my only view and iteration of camp was I um, used to work for a lot of church camps. I, w I worked with this organization and I was asked to leave because I came out as a gay man. That's horrible. And I was asked to leave Ooh. this camping organization because I am a queer person. And because I'm gay, I can't tell kids about Jesus. And and so coming here to Camp Wanakiki and doing something that celebrated the queer culture is something that really allows me to be able to get a positive camping and be 100% of who I am instead of living a lie or anything else. Well, I think speaking as a woman of a certain age, I'm <laughs> um, She's 25. And still holding. Um, it's still holding. I, and it's the fact that somebody considered that I still have value after all these years meant a great deal to me. I never knew who I was until drag. Mm -hmm. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Does. I it's was totally always does. afraid of drag queens, and really? then I yeah, I was literally afraid of a drag queen my first time ever seeing what was terrifying. Wow. I thought yep. that was disgusting. Yeah. It was strange. And then I started doing drag years later, and mm -hmm. I've never loved myself until I started doing drag. Out of the geesh my size is not something that's revered at all. And as Boris, people applaud it. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Yes, that's yeah. exactly yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> my family's very accepting, uh, but my dad never knew I was gay. He passed away before, I, oh, no. yeah. It, he wouldn't have probably been too accepting about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I never told him, and no one ever told him. Mm -hmm. And so he passed away not knowing. Um, and the last time I saw him, I was with someone mm -hmm. in the... Uh, um, Uh, in the nursing home, mm -hmm. and um, I was with my boyfriend at the time, and it was just very hard. Um, and I think he knew, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just like he accepted me for being me. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's it's but, amazing that you get to have that moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was it was freeing. It really was. Yeah. As far as my parents go, they um, actually saw me in drag for the first time 
at Hamburger Mary's. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a That's few family. Family. Yeah. A few months ago, it was at Hamburger Mary's. We sat them front row, and I perform uh, performed a song that was very special to me, and my dad. Um, and there was tears, and there was tips everywhere, because of course I'm an amazing performer. Yeah. <laughs> and, so and it was mm -hmm. it was it was an amazing thing to kind of see them see all of me. Yeah. And I think that was an, uh, that was something that I will never forget. Mm -hmm. Give me back that crayon. Hey, no, 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 all right, campers, time's up. All right, let's just see what we have here. Oh. oh. Well, these right. certainly turned out, um, they oh. certainly did turn out, Jerry. <laughs> yes, they did. Let's see. Uh, Well, there were three that we liked a little bit more than some of the others. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, they all look great. Boris, like for example, I feel like yours is kind of like I'm watching the little rascals while I'm on acid. <laughs> Perfectly. <laughs> I know Tor, did you not understand the assignment? I'm not sure what happened. I'm just getting real then. Oh my god, that one on the end looks like an angry head of lettuce. But anyways. That's my aesthetic. But we did love three of them. I have to say Vivica, we loved yours. Oh yeah! I have to say Diana, we love yours. Yeah. But the winner of our challenge goes to Ivana! Ivana, where did these eyelashes come from? My face! <laughs> Congratulations, Ivana. Thanks! So, moving right along, tonight's talent show is impersonation. Ooh. So, you've just turned these wig heads into a mirror image of yourself. It's time to turn yourself into the mirror image of one of your favorite celebrities. But that's not all. You will need to prepare a short stand-up routine as your celebrity. Okay. So, okay. I hope you could in impersonations. What the hell impersonation was that? It's the drag queen's English, I believe. <laughs> 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 well, we hope your impersonation is a little bit better than Cherry's. We'll see you later tonight. Bye! Bye. Eat, drink, and be merry, honey, at Hamburger Mary's, the premier spot for drag queen entertainment, including our world-famous nightly Dining with the Divas drag shows and our fabulous weekend mimosa brunch. Sink your teeth into one of our mouth-watering burgers, entrees, or a variety of other menu items, and wash it all down with a signature Hamburger Mary's cocktail. Visit HamburgerMary's.com to find the location near you. Be sure to make a reservation for your next night out. Until then, eat, drink, and be merry! Hello, campers. Come play with us forever and ever and ever. Terrific, 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 terrific. Uh, how are you, Camp on a Kiki? Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. And we're here with the Shining Twins. The Shining Twins. That's the Shining Twins. That's what I call my boobs. Because they're always together, they're lonely, and they freak people out. Always, yes. <laughs> my boobs. <laughs> Can we talk about my breasts? My boobs have fallen so low, I can breastfeed snakes. It is just... 
It's awful getting older. It's terrible. My ass has gone so far south, I fart in Spanish. It is just <laughs> between my boobs and my ass hitting the ground. I took a walk down the street the other day, and I erased the bike lane. Ah, yes, you don't know. Don't get me started on my vagina. My vagina is so dry. How dry is it? Thank you for asking. My, my vagina is so dry, camels follow me home. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. We're going to have a great, great night. Let's start the show, Camp on Kiki. Oh my gosh, hello everyone. Thank you. Wow, two people. Thank you, thank you. I know what you're thinking. I can see it in your face, even though you have sunglasses on. Yeah, you're like, oh my gosh, is that the lady from the menu at that burger place? No, that's not me. Have a good night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's me, Hamburger Mary. You may applaud. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I have a little secret, though. My name actually was Cheeseburger Molly. One person, you're welcome. Um, okay, well, long story. You see, when I got the job, they were like, oh, Hamburger Mary just sounds a little more kosher or something. I don't know, but you know, it was nice. So I took the job and it's been wonderful. It really has. I mean, there's literally hundreds, okay, dozens, okay, just 14 unemployed restaurant mascots around this country. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's a, I used to actually be one of them. I know. Now, if you're thinking of opening a fast food restaurant, I beg you, please hire one of us. Maybe a Pizza Bell or Taco Hut. I did that right, good, I'm making sure. Yeah, oh, you know, or maybe for just, for just $10 a day, you can sponsor an unemployed restaurant mascot in the arms of an angel. Sad puppy commercial. Oh, fuck, you know. But you know what, in the meantime, Stop by a Hamburger Mary's today and go see a queen. Tip a queen. Take a selfie. Or an ussy, like the kids are calling it nowadays, with me, Hamburger Mary. Or now that we're friends, Cheeseburger Molly. Because who doesn't love a lady with a little something extra? Talking about cheese. This is the cheeseburger, you f***ing creeps. Have a good night, everyone. Mwah! Thank you. Fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by day. Hi. <laughs> How's everybody doing? In the name of the moon, I will vanquish you. Yes. <laughs> what? Y'all don't think Sailor Moon can't be black? That's racist. <laughs> So anyway, I'm Lizzo. It's nice to meet you guys. I'm stopping here, Camp Wanakiki on my tour. I'm so excited to be here. Thought the audience would be bigger, but it's fine to do small venues. <laughs> so fine to do small venues. It's been a wonderful journey for me. So seriously, when I grew up, like I always wanted to be a singer, but I feel like most black kids want to be a singer. Seriously, it's like one of the few professions you can still do from jail. Like, <laughs> if you turn out to be a statistic. I grew up singing in the church, you know, like my idols like Beyonce and Whitney Houston, Jennifer Hudson. And I know white folks have those idols too that sing in church. Y'all got like Marilyn Manson, I believe. <laughs> so anyway, so as I grew up, you know, everybody like, I started blowing up, I started getting my music. And everybody always told me, they're like, you can't be a singer unless you lose a little weight. Even my producers, my fan, they're like, hey Lizzie, you gotta lose a little bit of weight. And even when I first released my album, they were like, you gotta lose a little bit of weight. And all I wanna think to them after I was dusting the crumbs off my shirt is saying, thick girls do it better. More pushing for the cushion. More righteous for your voice. More donuts at the end of the set. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's so good. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'll be right back. Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my channel. Now, I know what you're thinking. What is a problematic YouTube guru doing in the middle of Camp Wanakiki? Well, let me tell you, I don't know either, okay? Isn't Camp Wanakiki ground zero for the Ebola outbreak? I am very terrified to be here right now. Hold on, it's my manager. Uh-huh, okay. Oh, so Ebola's not that serious anymore, okay. Are you sure? 
have you seen these campers? They literally look like they're on their deathbed. <laughs> oh, oh, that's their aesthetic. They want to look that ugly. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's why I'm here to help them. Okay. Oh, don't tell them. <laughs> it's a little too late for that. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'll be sure to turn to my notes app to apologize for that later. Girl, can you believe these idiots paid $250 to see me sing horrible renditions of Taiga? I could do one now for you. Woo woo woo. Woo Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just a snippet of what I can do. I could do way more than that. Now, the house is a brand new terminology that I just invented all on my own with no help whatsoever. Do you guys want to know what it means? The house means the most or so. So, for example, if you want to say Ruthie is so funny, you could say Ruthie is so funny, the house. Now try it with me. Ready? One, two, three. Ruthie is so funny. The house. Great job. You're getting him. So proud of you, sisters. Let's try another one. The Sugar Baker twins are glamorous. The house. Ready? Say it with me. The Sugar Baker twins are glamorous. The house. Oh my God, sisters, you're getting it. One more to make sure you guys have it. Barbara's going to win this challenge. The house. Say it with me. Barbara's going to win this challenge. The house. You know what, we'll see if that's true later on, okay, sisters? So thank you so much, sisters, for spending $500 to be here with me. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the Camp Wanna, what's it called? Camp Wanna Kiki, yeah, that's right. Bye, sisters. Thank you all for being here today. Given how previous press conferences have gone, this administration has decided we will no longer be accepting live questions from the lying media to peddle their fake news. The president has instead insisted that we will only be accepting questions from the last true, honest form of media, Twitter. <laughs> Face ID not recognized. There we go. <sighs> Our first question comes from Make Camp Great Again. They ask, when trying to grab another drag queen by the pussy, should I be grabbing their tuck or their pads? That right there is a bold accusation suggesting that the president would know anything about this subject, despite the fact that we have audio recordings and he has admitted to that quote. I feel like you are really twisting these direct quotes to fit your disgusting narrative. Flaming Sheetos asks, <laughs> Yesterday, when asked about which camper was going to have to take a hike next, you said the president hadn't made a decision. Then today, he tried to eliminate someone before the talent show even started. He doesn't even run Camp Wanakiki. Were you lying yesterday? First of all, that is clearly more than 255 characters. <laughs> <clears throat> Second of all, these are baseless accusations that I am a liar, and all I have to say is I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> liar, liar, Diana Fire. <laughs> Free Melania 420 tweets, Help. <laughs> well, I am not 100% sure what that means, but I am 100% sure that that is fake news. That is all that we have time for today. I hate you all. I hate my job. Please don't come back. <laughs> Whoa! Camp on a Kiki! What's up? It is your favorite chef. I'm here, it's me, Gassietti. I am so happy to be here tonight. So I know a lot of times at camp, food, not so great. But I'm here to tell you how you can get to Flavortown. I know you've been working on those compass skills, so I've got a map to show you just how to get there. The map to Flavortown. You're gonna wanna start right here in the Holy Stromboli Forest. 
you're gonna wanna take a layer of nacho cheese, top it off with some spicy marinara, and then top the whole thing off with a bone-in pork chop, wrap it up in a foot-long sandwich, and then shove it in a deep fryer, because I love to shove things. <laughs> so we're gonna move right on over to the Nacho Cheese River. We're getting spicy. Things are getting hot. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Now, once you've gotten yourself nice and lubed up in that Nacho Cheese River, you're gonna wanna spread yourself all the way around to Winter Winter Chicken Dinner Canyon. That's right. You're gonna wanna skip that scenic route just for now and move on over to Fatback Bacon Canyon. Oh yes. Once you get over there, you're gonna wanna move right on to Pizza Prairie. That is an amazing, delicious frisbee on a platter. Let me tell you, that's gonna be mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, cheddar cheese, dick cheese, head cheese, <laughs> cheese whiz. And guess what you're gonna top it off with? You guessed it, cheese. Now, if that wasn't cheesy enough for you, we're gonna move right along to French Fry Farms. Once you're at French Fry Farms, you're not that far away from Flavortown. Now come right along and follow me in there. We've almost made it back to Holy Stromboli Forest, but you know what? We didn't take that scenic route. So you go here, you go here, you go here, <laughs> here, 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 and then you're just gonna shoot right on out of Flavortown. I'm getting hungry, so I gotta get on out of here, campers. You stay safe. Woo! Hello, I'm Mary Berry. You can tell that I'm British because my accent is almost as good as cherries. <laughs> Ever since getting the boot from the Great British Bake Off, I thought that perhaps it would be a lovely idea to invite the viewers of my television program to write in to me when they need a special recipe for the most special of occasions. And I have the first run right here with me. Shall we take a look? <laughs> it says, Dear Mary Berry, when we first got together, my boyfriend of seven years would serve me dessert every night. Sometimes he would even give me three or four servings in a row. But ever since I rediscovered my love of Taco Bell, he won't give me dessert anymore. He says it's simply too messy. <laughs> Do I need to give up my beloved quesaritos to enjoy sticky buns? <laughs> and it's signed, starved of desserts of my youth. My recommendation is that you learn to give yourself dessert by becoming an accomplished master baker. Most of us start beating our batter quite young and practice often, but it's never too late to learn a new trick or two. So try varying your technique a little, a little up and down, a little side to side. You can try beating with your left hand for a change. <laughs> Before I leave you to get baking, I have one more tip. Try not to focus too much on finishing quickly. Um, remember, you can be making dessert for yourself for the rest of your life, so there's no need to rush. Just focus instead on how good it feels to Finally be baking for yourself, and before you know it, you'll be enjoying the fruits of your labor. But be careful, the cream will be hot, and it's been known to get everywhere. Oops. Mm, absolutely scrummy. Dead house, I see. Not the first time. All of you know who I am. And if you don't hand over your gay cards, you're done. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts, boys. It's going to be a bumpy set, apparently. I'm not allowed to smoke in here. The sleep paralysis demons over there told me I'm not allowed to, and their check cleared, so I have to listen to what they say. <laughs> But I love just having it in my mouth. It brings me such comfort. Oh, I love smoking. I really do. In fact, my doctor said, if you never smoked a day in your life, 
you could have lived to the year 3045. Who wants to be that old? Not me. Die pretty, they say. But I do love being here at Camp Wanakiki. Although, I have to say, what a dump. I've never seen such dismal showers since the days of whatever happened to baby Jane. <laughs> so, whatever happened to baby Jane? I was the star of that film. There was another person in there named Joan Crawford. You probably don't know her. Joan played a cripple, and now she's dead, and she won't let us forget it. Poor Joan. I passed her on my way down to hell myself. Her hell is much nicer than mine, much like the showbiz that we both endured. I'm handcuffed to an empty cigarette machine, and where is she? She's wearing an ill-fitting muumuu made out of wire hangers. Poor, poor Joan. Poor old Joan. I got a gift for you while I was on Earth, Joan. <laughs> you. <laughs> well, you've been a terrific audience. I'd like to kiss you all, but I just washed my hair. <laughs> Bye. Hello, it's me, Julia Child, back from the death like a phoenix from the campfire. And today, we will be making s'mores, especially made for you millennials who are doing the kettle diet. Oh, no, the quinto diet. No, the keto diet. The, ke the keto diet, yes. So, for the keto diet, we have some very special ingredients. First of all, we have the butter. Next, we have the sugar-free marshmallows. Then we have baker's chocolate, followed by graham crackers made of coconut flour. Now, the things about coconuts is that they are a magical fruit. <laughs> you know, with coconuts, not only can you cook low-carb baking dishes with it, you can also use the oil to take off your makeup at the end of the day. So, that is the magic of coconut. And here we are. I made some s'mores right here for everybody. So, here we are. Joan, twin, one, twin, two, there we go. Now we eat it on the count of three. One, two, and three. Mmm. Oh. 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 It tastes a little bit like tree bark. Oh. You know what goes good with tree bark? <laughs> a little oak barrel aged pink Zinfandel. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, I should have known better than that. Oh, the chocolate would have worked better with the wine. What was I thinking? Oh, I have to get this taste out of my mouth. Oh, you know what? Butter makes everything better. Mmm. Oh. Oh, 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 yes, indeed. My name is Julia Child, and we'll see you later. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and members of the foreign press, who are usually neither. I would like to thank you tonight for presenting me, Joan Crawford, with this year's Mother of the Year Award. It's an award that I will remember and treasure for as long as I can. You know, the press often ask my children, they say, what makes Joan such a good mother? And they reply, it beats me. <laughs> What's that? 
Barbara, please stop interrupting me. I told you how important this is to me. Why can't you treat me like I would be treated by any drag queen on the street? <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yes. While I have your attention, I'd like to talk to you for a moment about this alleged feud between myself and Betty Davis. It's pure nonsense. Betty Davis, in my eyes, is a treasure. One that should have stayed buried. <laughs> Betty is fondly known for her famous line, What a dump! which coincidentally is what I took after seeing her last three pictures. <laughs> Speaking of pictures, I've made over a hundred throughout the years, some with crayons and some with watercolors. <laughs> Thank you, I love you, I love you all. And good night from Hollywoodland, California. <laughs> hello, 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 darling. How are you this evening? I'm so happy to be here at Camp Wanakiki. I am back from the dead and I'm still feeling bloated. <laughs> well, I know I am going to tell you a little bit about myself. I am very famous for my nine married marriages. But since my death broke up my last marriage, I've been able to do it three more times. <laughs> it is very, very important for you to find a man who can financially support you, yes? I believe the kids are calling this a sugar daddy. Or if you're gender neutral, I believe it's called a glucose patron. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I find it is very important that your husband never ever gives you ultimatums. He's supposed to love you and support you. I once had a husband tell me, Jaja, you have to choose. It's me or the cat. Well, the cat and I are now dead, and I haven't seen my husband since either. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is very, very important for you girls to know your worth. I once had a doctor tell me, Jaja, you can no longer have anything alcoholic. So I got a divorce. I also, Jesus Christ, I've also had a husband tell me, Jaja, you need to be a better housekeeper. So when we got divorced, I kept his house. <laughs> <laughs> Now, who you divorce is much, much more important than who you marry. Before you marry, ask yourself, can this man support me? Then ask yourself, after I leave him, can this man still afford me? <laughs> and, sorry. And once you start feeling that butterfly like romantic feeling in your stomach about a man, that is all the sense leaving your body. So don't get married. My name is Jean Jacques Edvard, and have a good night. All right, my little shining twins. <laughs> so <laughs> we just had another outstanding talent night. Wow. Our yes. first celebrity impression talent night at Camp Wanakiki, I might add. Was impressive. It was impressive. <laughs> it was. I really liked Julia Child. Oh. Julia Child. Vivica Galactica's Julia, Julia Child. Great, great, great. 
<laughs> not, not only great because she threw hairy nuts in her face, <laughs> but great and gave us food. Vivica was great, very entertaining. Uh, she had great stage presence. The use of props was fantastic. It's hard Butter to work with that many nuts. props, too. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of props, I love Boris. Oh my yeah. gosh, Fantastic so guy here. I mean, really. So I actually do watch Triple D and Guy's Grocery Games, and that was Guy Fieri. Yes. That was so funny, high energy. Crazy. I could totally see uh, Boris running through the supermarkets. <laughs> I thought Chora was really fun as well, Hamburger Mary. I thought that was cute, cute, cute. Well done, clever with the backstory of the unemployed yeah. uh, fast food uh, spokespeople. I thought she was terrific. Give Mary, give Mary the crown already. Yes, <laughs> Hamburger Mary. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> It was a gamble because um, she's doing a mascot that doesn't really have a voice, but she, I, that was Hamburger Mary with a backstory, and it was great. It was cute. It was James cute. Charles, Th that was James Charles. Yeah, that was funny. That was a Barbara yeah. was really funny. Barbara really stepped up her game this time. Let's talk about Claire today. Not oh. a good day for Claire. This was no, not, not a good not day. A good her day. wig head was not very good. It was artsy, but the, but the camp activity was to make a wig head that looked like you, and it was just too artsy. And then today at the talent show, just it was What's not giving me Mary Berry at all. I mean, yeah. I, I, I get it. Uh, Claire likes to show her legs. She's got beautiful legs, but um, it's an impersonation. So put some stockings on, maybe. It was very distracting. Well, speaking of like the the the, the butt of that joke, so to speak. <laughs> um, as much as I don't mind a hairy ass in my face every once in a while, uh, it, she kind of missed the, a big joke that could have been the whole soggy bottom thing. You know, I watched Great British Making Show, it's one of my favorite shows uh, out there, and that's a really funny line that she says all the time about, you know, don't have a soggy bottom. Uh, yeah. And then she could have bent down and we see her hairy ass. It would have just been so much funnier. The jokes, even the funny jokes weren't delivered well enough Correct. to get a laugh from me. Which reminds me of our friend Ivana. Now Ivana won the wig head challenge again. She always does really well in the day activities. Amazing. And then we come to the talent show and not so much. I thought her look was fantastic. She's gorgeous. I, I love Ivana. I I just, I really thought she was coming into this. I thought she was gonna be uh, a front runner in this. I really did. Um, I thought her impersonation of Jaja Gabor was good, but she kept forgetting her lines and you can't keep going back. I mean, this is competition. It's not fair to the other campers if, uh, they all knew their routine and she just, she just didn't. She yeah. didn't, she didn't prepare. What did we think about Carly as Betty Davis? Betty Davis! Betty, Betty Davis! <laughs> she, Betty! Yes, wrong Betty. <laughs> she had a couple of good lines. She had a couple of, um, the inflections I thought were, were, were kind of good. But the overall performance yes. to me was also just kind of, she reached, she flat. was reaching for the lines. She was too. reaching for lines. I uh, thought she sounded like her at points. But it was also like an evening with Betty Davis at a theater and not this campy, campy, cabaret, funny parody of Betty Davis. It wasn't amped up. She it wasn't amp amped up. up with that. Some of the jokes were just, I just didn't get. Coco, I thought, also struggled. I was really kind of surprised about Coco because she's so funny and she says really funny things and all day during the challenges, uh, she's really funny. And then she has an opportunity to do a stand-up routine and she almost seemed like she was holding back. I liked Diana's Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> I thought it was spot on look wise. Um, one, of my favorite, were, one of my favorite lines of anybody's was face ID not recognized was just hilarious. It was. Uh, I thought she was great. I wish I would have got a little bit more of that, that accent that Sarah has. I would have liked to have heard that a little bit more. That's the only yeah. thing. She was good. She wasn't my favorite, but she was good. Yeah, it was my favorite either, but it was good. And what about Miss Kitty Litter? Kitty Litter was so cute! Adorable. <laughs> I love a good John Crawford impersonation, and I thought she she had it. Well, I think maybe we should call him back in. Yes, yes. let's call him back in. Let's call in our celebrities. The queen or king of Camp Wanakiki will take home a fabulous prize package worth nearly $10,000, including an all-expense-paid cruise provided by cruise planners at All Out Vacations. Check out their exciting LGBTQ groups at alloutvacations.com and click on Groups. Let your cruise and land tour specialists help you discover exciting adventures around the world. A custom-made, one-of-a-kind necklace and earring set designed by award-winning artist Chris Jensen of C3 Designs. Handcrafted of sterling silver with jasper and pink topaz gemstones, 
This wearable work of art designed exclusively for the winner of Camp Wanakiki is valued at $2,000. Free burgers for a year, compliments of Hamburger Mary's, where you can eat, drink, and be merry, honey. The winner of Camp Wanakiki will also be featured as a headliner at the Austin International Drag Festival, the world's largest drag festival. All this and a great big wad of cash, too. Campers, again, great talent show. Good job. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, so listen up as I call your names. Boris. Claire. Ivana, Carly, and Vivica. So if I've called your name, you are in the top or the bottom this week. If I did not call your name, congratulations, you have earned your Mirror Mirror badge. You may wait backstage for the badging ceremony. Okay, campers, first we would like to talk to the top two this week. So that would be Vivica and Boris. Yes. <laughs> so you three, if you can wait backstage for a minute. Well, what a nice, solid job from both of you. Yes. yes. As someone who does a lot of uh, celebrity impersonations, I thought you were just both fantastic. And as someone who owns a couple of restaurants, it's nice we have two <laughs> chefs in the top. Yeah. <laughs> Boris, uh, you had me heading to Flavortown, uh, and your map Hilarious. is just hysterical. Yeah. I'm calling it the happy ending of your routine. Yeah. Was... <laughs> there was a happy trail there, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. And, and Vivica, the props that you had, you had very good use of props with the s'mores. Um, uh, with the wine. Only critique I would have for you is that next time, aim for her head. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent use of props. I didn't even know we had coconut trees on camp. So, shall we announce? Our winner? Our winner. I so would love to. We have written down on our chalkboards who is the winner today. <laughs> I voted for Boris. I think the winner is Vivica. Well, mirror, mirror, you're both winners. Yes! <laughs> Congratulations, campers. You've both earned your mirror, mirror badge, and you can wait backstage for the badging ceremony. Congratulations. You've both won a generous prize package from Bat Me Cosmetics. Bat Me Cosmetics is a proud LGBT-owned and cruelty-free makeup company. And a portion of every purchase made is donated to the LGBT Center of Los Angeles. You can visit BatMeCosmetics.com to look sickening while supporting a great cause. Campers, unfortunately today you are in the bottom. As you know, we do not have enough badges for everyone, so someone is going to have to take a hike. So, um, Ivana, we see you again in the bottom. Uh, your nerves today, I think, got the best of you. And once again, stunningly beautiful, as Stunning. always, and slaying the daily challenge, as always. And then at the talent show, you're giving us good, you're not giving us great. And that's what we are looking for. I think you're stunning, as always. I do think you got a little bit in your own head today. Who doesn't love Zsa Zsa Gabor, God damn it. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> Claire, I am a big, big Mary Berry fan. Your impersonation did not quite live up to the expectation that I would have had. The accent was a little off, which I get. You're not British, so you don't speak British. You were trying, I get that. I feel like some of your jokes uh, were funny, but weren't delivered well, and it kind of went on for a long time. I think this maybe just wasn't your day. And last but not least, look who's here. It's Betty Davis. Betty Davis. Betty Davis. <laughs> Carly. Carly and I Clay. I think that what we saw today, and I love Betty Davis too, uh, but it just seemed not as funny or campy as this. This was supposed to be. It was more of a tribute to her, which is yeah. okay, but just not what this was about. Similarly to Ivana, I think you were in your head a lot today mm -hmm. as well. I mean, you were... We, we could see you reaching for the lines uh, a, a little bit, and I think that that hurt with with some of the delivery came, came across a little flat. Yeah. I will give you props for looking very glamorous and very vintage Hollywood yes. glam yes. for sure. Yes. 
But overall, I would like to say for all three of you, I mean, in everyone in this competition, and, I, and I, we've repeated over and over again, you're all fabulous. Yes. I mean, you're amazing performers. And to get up here and do that on the stage, I mean, kudos to you, props to you. Do not feel like going home today is, is a defeat. I mean, because you, you're all winners, you're here. We do have to make decisions. We are going to vote for who is going to get their Mirror Mirror badge. So I voted for Claire. Thank you. I voted for Carly. And I also voted for Claire. Congratulations, Claire. You have earned your Mirror Mirror badge and you may wait backstage. Ivana and Carly. You are amazing camp queens, and you are going to go very far. We have not seen the last of you. But because this is the Mirror Mirror Challenge, I'm sorry, but you will both be taking a hike. And I just want to say something that the late, great John Rivers said. Whenever God gives you an opportunity, say thank you, because you never know when the big guy might be listening. So thank you, thank you for letting us get to know you. Don't cry. You're too pretty to cry. Well, only I'm weak. Which is why I've done a lot of it. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. It feels really shitty to be leaving the competition tonight. Um, I prepped really hard and I know I have a lot of people rooting for me and expecting me to make it all the way. And right now I just, <laughs> doing so poorly, I kind of feel like a disappointment. Um, I mean, I know I'm better than my performance on the show, and it just kind of sucks not being able to go further and show that I am better than what I did. To all my friends and my family, my boyfriend, I love you guys so much. I really can't wait to come home because I feel like I need it. <laughs> I'm Ivana. Follow me on Instagram at Joey with two Y's underscore Ivana, something like that. Um, I promise I have some pretty awesome things to look at on there. And until I got, see you guys next time. in shock I'm I don't think that anyone could have predicted that tonight would have been a double elimination um, I know that my per I know that my portrayal of Betty Davis was not the best um, I know that I could have done more research I know that I could have memorized my jokes better but hindsight is 2020 um, the only thing that I regret is that I didn't get to show America as much of me as I wanted to. But I'm happy because I made it here to begin with. And to just be here to have a platform to showcase who I am in the first place, that's, that's an accomplishment within itself. I want to thank the Sugar Baker Twins and Ruthie for giving me this opportunity 
and thank you to everyone who was very supportive of me. I honestly made some of the best friends that I have right now because of Camp Wanakiki. I didn't expect to become friends so fast with these other performers and to know that these people are more than just my friends, they're now my family and they come from so many places near and far. I I love every single one of them. My name is Carly Unitemclyde. I'm from season two of Camp Wanakiki. And ranch dressing is not a moisturizer, Linda. And freedom is an illusion. Da, da, da. Oh, that that, that I was shook. That was hard. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Yeah. Oh wait, I need to say I congratulations to Laura and Vivica for winning oh, yes. um, the yeah. talent show. Double yeah. win! Double yeah. win! Yeah. You know, How's that I, feel? I, I think it's so important to talk about the fact that Boris is not only the first drag king that is gonna be on a public competition, but he also was the first drag, queen to, drag king to ever win a competition. Yeah. Yes. In, uh, in I'm the winner? I'm the winner of Kia Pony Kiki? Yep, it's okay. Oh, 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 wow, spoiler alert. <laughs> I want Kitty to answer this, actually, because me and Kitty have not won so far any activities, and we have been safe for all of the talent shows. So you've never had that. We've never yeah. had either or. High or low. High or low, we've never had either, we're just right in the middle. So how do you feel about that? I don't wanna just rest on body off the audio. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if that was gonna change it. One thing that I think is really interesting is that we are, we hit the number of the original cast of Camp you know, yeah. 18. So oh, our, our oh, this season was super So we're only just starting. Yeah, right. Right. it's, it's kind of like we're starting all over again. Well, but it's so weird because we got used to having four extra people with us, and now that like eight people seem so small, it's crazy. What do you think tomorrow is? I just hope it just means what a day of napping. That sounds good. <laughs> Famous for being like a, a, a bat colony, and I think that's why I'm so popular there. A what colony? A bat colony. Oh, <laughs> 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 bats flying around all over the place. Fit right in. Oh my goodness! Is that why you see we see you hanging upside down in the cabinet yes. sometimes? <laughs> oh my goodness! Hey, we should probably we should probably consummate this, shouldn't we? Oh. What does that mean? It, that means you can't. It's what it. you and Paris have been doing since we got here. But consummate, isn't that mean when you can't poop? <laughs> okay. I mean, you shouldn't poop while you're consummating. It's in the moment, and once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. But you need to understand something about yourself, though. You need to be on camera if you want to talk. Uh, uh, <laughs> get over here, We're girl. Just have an authentic moment. You can't talk to her. <laughs> 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 it doesn't matter unless it's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>